please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Arroyo. Here. Barron. Here. Brewer. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Malone. Comrie, Crowley, Dickens, here, Delon, here, Drum, here, Eugene, here, Herreras, Fiddler, here, Foster, Gorodnik, Gennaro, Gentili, Gonzalez, Greenfield, Halloran, Ignizio, here, Jackson, here, James, Ku. Here. Coppell. Kozlowitz. Lander. Here. Lappin. Here. Levin. Here. Mark Viverito. Here. Mealy. Mendez. Here. Nelson. Here. Palma. <clears throat> Here. Thank you. Recchia. Here. Reina. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Here. Sanders. Present. Seabrook. Here. Ulrich. Oh. Aye. Vaca. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Van. Here. Weprin. Here. Williams. Here. Otto. Here. Rivera. Here. Speaker Quinn. We have a quorum. My colleagues, please rise for the invocation being delivered by Reverend Victor Brown from Mount Sinai United Christian Church. Let us bow our heads. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. God of heaven and God of earth, we reverently pause to give you thanks for the blessing of a new day. We appreciatively thank you for a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength. We petition your governing, guarding, and guiding presence over Speaker Quinn and members of this prestigious council. Overshadow our mayor and his staff. Grant unto him the clarity of wisdom to govern without selfish pretense. Remember Lord President Obama as he leads, seeks to lead us through the tempestuous waves of economic unrest mean-spirited partisan politics, wars and rumors of wars abroad, and the challenge of getting much-needed resources to Main Street. Grant us the inspiration to run swiftly to the banquet table of brother and sisterhood with the understanding that there is the worst in the best of us, the best in the worst of us. Therefore, it should behoove many of us not to judge the rest of us. Hasten the day when lion and lamb can lie down together and justice indeed will run down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. May we always answer in the affirmative to the proverbial question of the ages, 
am I my brother's keeper? And then God grant us peace, joy, and contentment for the balance of this day and in days to come. Amen. Councilmember Rose. Um, I incur. I make a motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Ordered. If I could ask uh, my colleagues to please rise. Thank you. On October 25th, uh, uh, 2010, Mary Dialba, uh, who was 70 years old, the mother of the City Council's Director of Security, Carl Dialba, passed away after a very long illness. Mrs. Dialba was a resident of Flushing, Queens. Uh, Mary and her husband, Carl Sr., had just celebrated their 49th wedding anniversary shortly before her passing. After working as a secretary, Mary Dialba was proud of being able to stay home and raise the family's four children, which include Carl, two brothers, and a sister. Mary Dialba's funeral will take place on Friday, October 29th, at Queen of Peace Roman Catholic Church in Flushing. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Carl, his father, his brothers, and his sister, uh, and their entire family. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you very much. Um, adoption of the minutes, Councilmember Ignizio. Yes, I make a motion that the minutes of September, the stated meeting of September 16, 2010, be adopted as printed by. Okay. So ordered. Messages and papers from the mayor. M285, withdrawing Michael Devonshire for appointment to the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. M286 through M306 on page 4, base station licenses. Petitions and communications. Uh, I'm sorry, oh, transportation. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call up. M307 through M310, sidewalk cafes. Uh, if we could couple all the land use call ups, please, and have a roll call on the uh, land use, coupled land use call ups. Thank you. Order. Gonzalez. Arroyo. Barron. I request unanimous consent to buy, vote aye on all general order, general order calendar items. So ordered. Thank you. <laughs> Brewer. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Comrie. Aye. Crowley. Aye. Dickens. Aye. Delon. Aye. Brom. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Ferreras. Aye. Fiddler. Yes. Foster. Aye, and I'd like consent to vote everything, uh, vote aye on everything before the calendar this afternoon. So ordered. Thank you. Garodnik. Aye. Gennaro. Gentili. Yes. Greenfield. Aye. Halloran. Aye. Ignizio. Yes. Jackson. Yes. James. Um, may I be excused to vote aye on all land use call-ups in the general calendar? So ordered. I vote aye on the everything. Thank you. Koo. Yes. Copel. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lander. Aye. Lappin. Aye. Levin. Aye. Mark Viverito. Aye. Mealy. Mendez. Aye. Nelson. Aye. Palma. Aye. Reccia. Aye. Reina. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Sanders. Aye. 
Seabrook. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Majority Leader, with unanimous consent, I'd like to vote on all land use call ups in general. So ordered. Call -up. I vote aye. Ulrich. Aye. Vaca. Aye. Van Bremer. Aye. Van. Aye. Weprin. Aye. Williams. Aye. Eugene. Uh, can I have uh, the uh, unanimous consent to vote all and all uh, land use call? Yes. And all items in the general calendar? Yes. Thank you. I vote all, I and all. Otto. Rivera. I vote I and all. Can we get some silence in the chambers, please? Speaker Quinn. All land use items were adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, with zero in the negative. Communication from the speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Majority Leader. I first want to uh, make note of the number of land use items that we are voting on today. I want to thank uh, the chairs of all of our subcommittees, but particularly uh, Chair Mark Weprin, who chairs our zoning subcommittee, and of course the chair of our uh, overall land use committee, Leroy Comrie, as well as Gail Benjamin and the rest of the staff. We are voting today on uh, our 40th rezoning in the borough of Queens and the largest rezoning that we've ever taken up for the borough of Queens, a rezoning that we believe will help protect the low-rise, one- and two-family home nature of many important neighborhoods in Queens. This was a rezoning that encompassed, I think, three or four council members' districts, which can often be complicated, but I think we balanced quite effectively the different issues and concerns here in a way that's going to help protect the integrity of these neighborhoods, and I want to thank everyone who was a part of that. We're also in my district uh, rezoning an uh, important part of Greenwich Village. Uh, in pa recent uh, past years, we saw a lot of development pressures in the village and attempts to inappropriately overdevelop Greenwich Village, and this rezoning will help protect the low-rise historic nature of Greenwich Village. We're also today uh, uh, fulfilling a promise that was made four or five or six in some cases years ago that when we rezone the Hudson Yards and West Chelsea neighborhoods that we would extend the anti-demolition and anti-harassment provisions that were put in place in Hell's Kitchen Clinton to the Hudson Yards area and to West Chelsea. We'll do that today and add extra tenant protections to 1,500 buildings throughout this area, making sure tenants there are not displaced by any new development. And I want to thank everyone who worked for a number of years. If, uh, if we can clear the, the back of the chambers, please. And Sergeant Yvonne, please clear the room. Clear, clear the, the room. back of the chambers.
We have confirmed we have good acoustics in the new chambers because I think everyone clearly heard the request to calendar intro 48. Going back to the matters that are on uh, the agenda, uh, which that one is not, I uh, want to thank everyone who was extremely helpful in making sure that this important promise of protecting tenants through the extension of these anti-demolition, anti-harassment provisions were put in place. In particular, I wanted to single out the work of Danielle DeServo, uh, formerly in my district office, now in the land use staff, for her work on that matter. I want to congratulate Councilmember Lander for his work on the Culver L rezoning as well. We are voting on two important pieces of legislation today, uh, intro 373A and a pre-considered resolution. I want to thank Matt Gwalb, Alex Pastilnik, and Damian Butvik for their work on these two bills. They were introduced by Councilmember Melissa Mark Viverito and moved through the Government Operations Committee by Councilmember Brewer. And quite simply, these two bills, one will require that a much greater statistics about domestic violence are made available in a transparent way through my neighborhood statistics as part of NYC.gov and that all of the domestic violence statistics are now in one place and we'll also have hate crime statistics on the same place that can be accessed on the internet. In doing so, if we could get a little quiet, we'll make sure that New Yorkers can know exactly what's happening in their neighborhoods as it relates to domestic violence and hate crimes. In doing so, hopefully we can all be aware of when these crimes are increasing as they now are. That will help us in government be guided on how and when we should be increasing our efforts. And also, I hope it will reduce the stigma that is also associated with being a victim of these crimes, a stigma we want to erase to help people feel comfortable calling the police can we have the sergeants and bombs remove these individuals from the chambers? And just to send a message that this does not, will not be tolerated inside these chambers. Um, apparently. Let me call on the sponsor of the bill, Councilmember Melissa Mark Viverito. Um, thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to say that I'm very uh, pleased that we're voting today on these two pieces of legislation, which uh, I've introduced, Intro 373A and Preconsidered Intro 393. I want to thank you uh, for co-sponsoring these with me, as well as the chair of the government ops. Committee, Gail Brewer, for her support of this legislation, and thank the staff, Rob Newman, Alex Pasilnik, Mag Gwalb, for their work on these bills. And you've clearly stated the importance of it. Can um, we get quiet so we can hear the sponsor? Unfortunately, domestic violence and hate crimes uh, continue to remain at endemic levels in this city, and making these statistics available in the My Neighborhood Statistics website will help New York City residents monitor the trends in these crimes in our local communities and ensure that resources are being distributed adequately while also demonstrating that both of these crimes remain at high levels in our city and in need of greater attention. Uh, this represents a very important step forward of, of transparency and accountability in these statistics, but clearly we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, for example, I've been fighting since the last term to get... Can we get a little quiet? Oh, geez. Uh, let's, we're, we're clearing the whole chambers, Chuck. Please, everyone in the public is going to be removed from the chambers. We'll stand in recess. Please go to the lounge until we clear the chambers. We're standing in recess. All members of the public need to leave the chambers. All staff who are not needed for the meeting need to leave the chambers.
We are going to reconvene. If we could please come back into uh, the chambers. Thank you. Um, I think we were, before we adjourned, uh, Councilmember Melissa Mark Viverito was speaking, so as soon as she comes back, we'll start with her. She's right here. She's coming. Okay. We're back in session. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader, uh, Councilmember Mark Viverito. And then we'll hear if she's returned from our sponsor, Councilmember Brewer. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I'll just, um, I'm wrapping up. So, well, the two bills that we will be voting on today represent an important step forward. Clearly, there's so much to be done on both of these issues. For example, I've been fighting since last term to get domestic violence statistics reported within CompStat, something which the administration, unfortunately, was not open to. But the Speaker understanding the importance of making these stats readily and more easily accessible worked diligently to help shepherd these bills forward, so I thank her for that. As mentioned earlier, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Also, just this month, we witnessed some of the most disturbing hate attacks against the LGBT community. Therefore, bringing these bills to the floor today is quite timely and really adds to the body of work that this council has engaged in to address both CV and hate crimes. So obviously, I hope all my colleagues, that are, I urge them to join me in voting in favor of these two bills. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilmember uh, Chair Brewer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Speaker, Councilmember Mark Riverito. These two bills uh, meld uh, issues that I care about, one of which is the public policy in terms of making sure that we do everything we can to stop domestic violence and hate crimes, but at the same time using technology for what technology is best used for, which is bringing issues to light. And the fact of the matter is the My Neighborhood site is a good site, but actually does not have the kinds of information that we are going to be putting on it. More people will go to it. More people will see the challenges. They'll see the breakdowns of domestic violence and hate crimes, and hopefully it's one more step in trying to get rid of both of them. Thank you very much. Thank you, and that concludes a exciting slash annoying uh, comments from the speaker. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. We'll move on to discussion of general orders. Uh, seeing none. Oh, okay. oh, oh. Apologize. Who is that? Uh -huh. yeah. Councilmember Halloran. First, let me just thank the uh, Land Use sub Subcommittee Chair Mark Weprin for his shepherding through the zoning process. Let me also thank uh, the zoning ch the uh, Land Use Chairman Leroy Comrie, who did such a great job. This is an imperfect uh, zoning solution to some areas in my district, but the overall effect will be a good one. We're down zoning and protecting the quality and integrity of our neighborhoods, and that's important. The details that uh, need to be worked out in the future, though, revolve around the mayor's willingness to work with our communities to actually have their agencies actively involved in ensuring that enforcement takes place, whether that's from the Department of Transportation, the Department of Buildings, or the Police Department. And so I look forward to uh, continuing to work uh, the Orbendale area, particularly the Station Road, area which was not included in the zoning plan. It was pulled out because consensus could not be reached. Uh, and I thank very much Peter Koo, my uh, coordinate councilman, who also had a large piece of zoning done and uh, his willingness to work with us 
to find solutions. I'm very appreciative. Thank you. Next, we have Councilman Melander. Thanks very much. I also want to thank my colleagues and the speaker. I'm very enthusiastic that uh, today the City Council will be passing the Culver L rezoning. Uh, this will create 68 units of affordable housing in the northern section of Borough Park and uh, rezone seven blocks with a uh, low and mid-rise mixed-use contextual zoning. Uh, I'm very pleased that working together we were able to uh, even improve this rezoning even more. Uh, the affordability period for this home ownership project has been lengthened from 15 to 30 years. I think the first time that's been done in the new foundations program and the affordability deepened. We pulled some key sites out to preserve jobs and are taking good steps forward on addressing open space issues and school overcrowding issues in the area. Um, getting all that done requires a lot of thank yous, so I'll try to move through them quickly. Uh, I want to thank the Speaker, uh, Chair Comrie, and Chair Weprin for all their help. Uh, the land use staff were great on this, Gail Benjamin, Carol Schein, and Amy Levitan. Uh, great support from the Department of City Planning, especially David Parrish, Winston Von Engel, Carolyn Grossman, and Purnima Kapoor, Mike Castertano from the Mayor's Office, and Mike Friedman Schnapp, my Policy Director. Uh, the Borough President, particularly Richard Barrick in his office, was very helpful here. Uh, Community Board 12 was an extremely active participant from the beginning, and I want to especially thank Yerucham Silber, who worked extensively on this project, both as a staffer for my predecessor in the Council, and then as Land Use Vice Chair at Community Board 12. Uh, this project was five plus years in the making, uh, and our predecessors in the Council helped get it moving forward. Uh, and thanks go to them, to Deputy Comptroller Simcha Felder and Public Advocate Bill de Blasio and then especially to my current colleagues, David Greenfield and Sarah Gonzalez, for all their support throughout the process. Um, this is a rezoning that's going to make a big difference on affordable housing, open space, uh, and jobs in Borough Park and Kensington in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any, anyone else with general orders? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move on to reports of special committees. None. Report of Standing Committee. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, Intro 373A, Hate Crime Statistics on the City's website. Amended and coupled on general orders, please. Preconsidered intro 393, domestic violence statistics on the city's website. Coupled on general orders. Report of the committee on land use, LU 217 and Reso 508, UDAP Bronx. Coupled on general orders. LU 225 and Reso 509 and 229 and Reso 510, sidewalk cafes. Coupled on general orders. LU 230, zoning map amendment. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to the Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council in Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 231 and Reso 511 through LU 234 and Reso 514 zoning amendments. Coupled on general order. LU 235 and Reso 515 and 236 and Reso 516 landmarks designations. Coupled on general order. LU 237 and Reso 517 sidewalk cafe. Coupled to be filed pursuant to the letter of withdrawal. LU 239 and Reso 518. Coupled on general order. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, M220 and Reso 519, approving the appointment of Michael Goldblum, Landmarks Preservation. Coupled on general order. M279 and Reso 520, approving the reappointment of Roberta Washington, Landmarks Preservation. Coupled on general order. M280 and Reso 521, approving the appointment of Mark Janai, New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission. Coupled on general order. General order calendar. LU-177 and Reso 522 through LU-193 and Reso 538 on page 13. Coupled on general orders, please. LU-230 and Reso 539, zoning map amendment, Queens. Coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled on general orders, and at this point I'd like to ask for a roll call on all items that have been coupled on the general order calendar, please. Arroyo. Aye and all. Brewer. Yes, aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Comrie. Aye and all. Crowley. Aye and all. Dickens. Delon. Aye and all. Drum. Aye and all. Barreras. Aye and all. Fiddler. Aye and all. Garodnik. Aye. Gennaro. Gentili. Yes. Gonzalez. Greenfield. I may I take leave to explain my vote? Yes. I'd just like to take a moment to uh, acknowledge the importance of the uh, rezoning of the Culverwell for the community that I represent. And Thank the speaker and my colleagues for their support. 
The approval of the Culverell Estates projects will bring the first affordable housing project to Borough Park in over a decade. Uh, low and middle class income families across the city desperately need safe, affordable housing options. And in Borough Park, there is a significant but unmet need for affordable housing. In particular, I'd like to thank my colleague Brad Lander. Uh, I look forward to collaborating with him as well as my colleague Sarah Gonzalez on future affordable housing projects in Bar Park. I'd also like to thank Councilman Lander's predecessor, now public advocate Bill de Blasio, for his efforts for Culverell. I'd like to thank my predecessor, Deputy Controller Simcha Felder, for envisioning this project, negotiating the housing component at the critical stages, and working for years to ensure its completion. I'm proud to be here today with my colleague Brad Lander to ensure that Simcha's five years of hard work has come to a successful conclusion. And with that, I vote yes on LU-177 to 193 and on all others. Thank you. Halloran. Aye. Ignizio. Yes. Jackson. Yes. Koo. Yes. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lander. Aye. Lappin. Aye. Levin. Mark Viverito. I don't know. Mealy. May I have permission to um, vote on all general orders? Uh, yes. And permission to vote on all call, land use call-ups? Yes. A vote aye. Mendez. I don't know. Nelson. Aye. Palma. I don't know. Rekia. I don't know. Reina. I don't know. Rodriguez. I. Rose. I don't know. Sanders. I don't know. Ulrich. I. Baca. I. Van Brema. I. Van. Yes. Weprin. Williams. Levin. Aye. Otto. Yeah, I vote no on issue 48. <laughs> <laughs> I made myself oh, laugh with that one. 48. Sorry about that, Melissa. I vote yes on all. Rivera. I vote aye. Pika Quinn. I vote aye on all. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, with zero in the negative and zero abstentions. And the revised land use call ups were adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, with zero in the negative. At this point in time, we'll move on to discussion of resolutions. Uh, seeing none for the discussion, uh, Speaker Quinn. Um, today we're voting on a, our second or third resolution dealing with a uh, piece of legislation that was passed by the State Senate and the State Assembly, a bill which would cap rent payments for HIV AIDS service administration clients at 30 percent of their income. That is what all social service recipients pay as it relates to rent, 30 percent of their income. That is what HIV AIDS service administration clients who are in scattered site or supportive housing pay. But an anomaly in this system, if you are a HASA client who lives in a private apartment you found on your own, there is no capped amount, even though you are living on public assistance and not able to work and have AIDS, there is no cap on how much of your own income you have to pay for rent. How do you end up in that position versus the other in HASA? It relates merely to which line you were directed to in the HRA office the first day you went to become an HIV AIDS service administration client. There is no other rhyme or reason to it. Some of these individuals that we're working with at the end of the month have $11 left. There's $11 to buy all the food and whatever else you need to deal with your life and to deal with your HIV and AIDS. 
The state legislature passed a bill that would have capped it at 30 percent. Unfortunately, Governor Patterson vetoed that bill. We're moving this resolution today because there will be a special session in Albany on November 15th, and we want to urge the state legislature to override the governor's veto and override the mayor's opposition to this important, life-saving piece of legislation, and I urge my colleagues to vote yes. I want to thank Council Member Chairperson Palma, who has been a real leader on the issue of getting the rent cap bill passed. I want to thank her and thank this council for its support of people with HIV and AIDS in the city. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I bypassed introduction reading of bills inadvertently, so we'll move on to that introduction and reading of, reading of the bills. All bills are referred to committee as indicated on the agenda. Thank you very much. Now we'll move on to the actual vote of the resolutions. Uh, resolution 477, resolution calling upon the New York State Legislature to override Governor Patterson's veto of Assembly 2565 and its companion bill in the Senate 2664, legislation that would amend the social services law to provide that persons living with clinical symptomatic HIV and AIDS who are receiving shelter assistance or an emergency shelter allowance shall not be required to pay more than 30% of their household's monthly income towards shelter costs, including rent and utilities adopted by the Committee on General Welfare. All in favor say aye. All, all opposed say nay. Uh, the ayes have it. At this point in time, we'll move on to general discussion. We have Councilmember Jackson. Thank you, Majority we Leader. Can you just My get a little quiet for Councilmember Jackson and general discussion? My colleagues, good afternoon. I rise uh, on our last stated meeting before the general election in order to remind all of us on November 2nd, even though we're not up for re-election or election as members of the city council. Uh, many of our colleagues at the state level are up for re-election. But also there are many other people running for various offices in the state of New York, for governor, lieutenant governor, uh, state controller, uh, attorney general, and many other officers. And as you know, there's been many uh, uh, people talking about this particular issue and from one extreme to the other. And I spoke at a church uh, this past Sunday in which I told the individuals at my father's church that I will never tell you who to vote for. But what I'm asking you to do is to make sure you get out and vote and exercise your right to vote. And that knowing that in the newspapers, in the radio, on TV, this is what you're hearing all over the country especially the, the, you know, coming down the home stretch, that they reach out to their family and relatives around the country to call them up and encourage them to get out and vote. Uh, knowing how important this is not only for our country, our state, and our city, as I said, there are parties in New York State. You have the Democratic Party. You have the Republican Party. You have the Conservative Party. You have the Working Families Party. You have the... Uh, uh, the Freedom Party trying to become a party. You have many other parties. And the rent is too damn high party. And you know one thing? I've said all along that when there is a public debate, all those individuals that qualify by getting signatures throughout different congressional districts around the state deserve to be heard, regardless of what you think about them. So I'm asking you as my colleagues, to make sure we get out there the last several days and ask all of our constituents to get out and vote for whoever they want. That's our constitutional right. And knowing that those that stay home will not make a difference and those that will get out and vote will be the deciding factor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We still have colleagues who are looking to speak, so if you can please give them some courtesy. Thank you. Uh, we have Councilmember Gail Brewer. Thank you very much. I rise to uh, say that we have been uh, overseeing and supporting information, uh, getting out to all council members on the Board of Elections. Uh, we are calling uh, that the uh, next director uh, be appointed after a national search. That's the short version. And if anybody needs more information, please let us know. We will be circulating any information uh, that the speaker and I and others put together. And I want to also thank Matt Gowalt for all of his hard work. Thank you. 
Thank you. Seeing no others, this meeting is adjourned.